Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and in this video we're going to be doing another card review featuring also the newest variant of the Hemet Nassingwary card, which I think is quite hilarious. Uh, pretty fitting considering that the last one was hilariously bad, but this one might actually see some potential. So we'll get to that at some point in this review. Uh, we've got about seven or eight cards for today, and we're starting off with the new Hunter card, Crackling Razor Maw. This is a two-mana, three-two minion battle cry adapt a friendly beast. So, uh, we keep going back to that adapt mechanic, and what you're looking at for adapt is things like plus one, plus one, making it poisonous, divine shield, taunt, or plus three attack, or plus three health. A lot of pretty good effects. Some aren't going to be very good in all uh, situations, like stealth. But since it's a discover-like effect, uh, you'll almost always have one that's pretty useful for your situation. So, um, as a 2-mana 3-2, that's your vanilla stat line. You would never play a 3-2 and construct it that doesn't do anything else. You would at least want it to be like an acidic swamp breeze, destroy the opponent's weapon. But the adept effect you got here is actually quite powerful for the mana cost. So if you have one minion on the field that's a friendly beast, very likely, considering that most hunter decks, I think, going forward are going to be playing with the Marsh Queen, which means a deck full of one drops. So you're going to have those one drops, you buff it up, um, you could give it plus three attack, you could make it poisonous to destroy an opponent's minion, almost like an equality. Uh, you can give it extra health for trading on board. You can give it stealth if uh, for some reason you need to keep it alive. It doesn't have to be one drop, it can just be any minion. And I think overall this is going to be a really strong card. Um, that said, uh, there were some pretty good two drops in the last set, the Mean Streets of Gadget Sand for Hunters, and it wasn't enough to make it a thing. Like, there's the Trog Beastmaster, three, two for three mana, uh, two mana, sorry. Give a minion in your hand, plus one, plus one, a beast in your hand. So that's like... Uh, like four, three of sets for two mana, but it wasn't really good enough, um, at least to see competitive playing competitive decks. So, for hunters to really come back, they need some really powerful cards, and uh, this might be good enough to play in a serious constructed deck. I think it is. Uh, I think if hunters do have a comeback, this will fit into most deck lists. Um, since beast is basically, hunters always play beasts to begin with. So, really strong card, solid 2-drop, uh, should see some play going forward. Hopefully Hunters don't totally suck this time. Uh, next up, King Mosh. Uh, this is a pretty cute 9-drop for Warriors, it's a legendary. It's a 9-mana, nine 9-7 nine beast. So, uh, noting that it's a beast, you could actually play this in a Curator-style deck, and that is relevant because sometimes, uh, like in tempo-based Warrior decks, people were playing curator um, drawing some of those 3-4 taunts for 3 mana, but this is a late game beast you would actually consider putting in it, uh, maybe for Control Warrior. So you destroy all damaged minions as it's battle cry, which kind of makes it like a mass execute, also adding your own minions too, but um, if you find a way to actually damage your opponent's minion, or you've already done it on a previous turn, uh, the effect can situationally be pretty powerful here. So... It's kind of like Sleep with the Fishes tacked onto a 9-7 minion, so if you think of it like, well, most minions, if they take 3 damage from Sleep with the Fishes, they're probably going to die because they're already damaged. Um, so it's like a pretty powerful 2-mana spell slapped onto a 7-mana 9-7, so you get 2 card effects in 1. And uh, it still feels a little underwhelming at that point, doesn't it? Uh, the Probably the best combo you got going on here is Whirlwind plus King Mosh, so 10 mana, clear the board, guaranteed. Uh, that's not bad, and this does do more damage than Sleep with the Fishes. Any minion is going to die to this. And you can always do something like a Weapon Swing and then execute it with King Mosh, but ultimately this is a really costly card. Um, and when you have other options like Brawl or Sleep with the Fishes, or I don't know, maybe even Dirty Rat, Doomsayer, this might not be that amazing. It's uh, it's not unusable, but I don't think it's going to see a huge amount of play, honestly. But I do like the concept, and I, I do like the fact that it's a beast, so you could consider this in a curator-style warrior deck. Okay, next up, Small Raptor. Uh, one mana, two, one beast for hunters. Uh, death Rattle, shuffle a four, three raptor into your deck, and the raptor is here. So one mana, four, three... Vanilla Raptor. It's a beast, of course. 
So um, if you look at the value of this card, it's like, wow, you get to put a one mana 4-3 in your deck. That's really powerful. Um, though you're probably not going to draw it for a few turns. So it's not immediately strong, but over the course of a drawn-out game, it can be pretty good. Obviously, this is a, a solid minion to put into a uh, Marsh Queen, uh, Queen Carnessa style deck, where eventually your goal is to play a lot of one drops. And remember, the 4-3 Raptor is a one drop as well. And then uh, you get Carnessa out, you put 15 one drops that are 3-2 Raptors that draw a card, and then you just flood the board with one drops and you win the game. So in that style of deck, this is really good. Um, you could argue in a lot of Hunter decks this would be really good. I mean, just having a 1 mana 4-3 is powerful. So, it's kind of like having a 1 mana 3-2, sort of, but one that doesn't have you gain early tempo, but rather is uh, better in the late game, or the mid game. Uh, I think this will see play, and I definitely think it's going to see play in the Carnassa style deck, simply because you need all the good 1 drops you can get, and this is pretty solid. Um, also note, it's a death rattle effect, so if you get any cards that clone it, uh, clone the death rattle effect, like we'll see later on, then um, you might be able to double down on that value, which is cool. Okay, next up, not the raptor, but, uh, ah, Hemet Jungle Hunter. So this is the kind of trolley card I was talking about, but it's actually not that bad. So this is a 6 mana, 6-6 six, six battle cry, destroy all cards in your deck that cost 3 or less. So, the idea behind this card is that it is a deck thinner. Um, assuming you're playing something that's kind of more tempo-oriented, you don't want to have dead draws when you get late into the game. Imagine you're playing something like a mid-range Shaman, and uh, the last few cards that you really want to draw from your deck are something like Fire Elementals, or, uh, I don't know, 4-mana uh, seven sevens, let's say. Um, but you don't want to draw Mana Tide Totem, you don't want to draw Flame Tongue Totem, Though you probably would, honestly. Flame Tongue Totem is usually pretty good. Uh, but you probably don't want, like, a uh, Trog, a 1-mana one 1-3. One and this is all assuming the current standard metagame. I know some of those cards getting ro rotated out, but hey. So uh, you remove those cards from your deck, and you kind of more guarantee that the last few cards you draw as the game's closing out are going to be powerful cards. And that's the whole idea behind this. So... It increases the value of each card in your deck because you're getting rid of the fluff that's just meant to handle the early game. Now this is obviously terrible for control decks that would go to fatigue and terrible for aggro decks because aggro decks probably play a lot of one, two, or three cards, three cost cards. I don't think this would be an aggro anyway. Um, but mid-range style decks, I think this is going to be pretty good. So six mana six six is not too bad of stats. I mean, the, the vanilla stats line you're looking at is the Bolt of Fist Ogre, which is 6 mana, 6, 7. Um, and you're just dropping 1 health to gain this effect. So, in those specific decks that are mid-range and really need the last few draws to count, I think this will be a card that can actually see some play, which is really funny, because it's like, I've got the beast in my sights, but what's the beast? It's your own deck. So, even... At least this one's kind of playable, right? Because the other one was like 5 mana, 5, 3, destroy a beast, which ironically might actually be good in this set, considering how many beasts there are. But uh, old Hemet is definitely going to be rotated out. Um, but new Hemet, um, playable. Playable. I hope he has some funny dialogue. In any case, crazy card can only be possible in a computerized game like this. Well... I guess you could technically put this into Magic the Gathering, but do you really want to have to filter all the 1, 2, or 3 cost cards in your deck and put them out? Uh, zero cost as well. Okay, moving on. Okay, so Terra Scale Stalker. It's a 3 mana 3, 3 for Hunters. Trigger a friendly minion's death rattle. So this works with the small Raptor. You can add another 4, 3 Raptor for 1 mana into your deck. Um, but there's probably better options like Savannah High Main, getting uh, two two twos onto the field immediately. You could put it with um, the uh, three mana three three that gives a random minion in your hand plus two plus two. I forget the name of that guy, but it's not Beast. Um, and there's also going to be some other options. Now Blizzard was saying that they want to bring Death Rattle back in one way or another this set. So um, the better the uh, the Death Rattle cards are, the better this is going to be. Obviously, if you were playing Wild, this plus Sylvanas would be crazy good as a 3 mana 3-3 three, three mind control random enemy minion and keeps Sylvanas alive on the field. Um, but in the current lineup, like considering what options Hunters have with them, 
Um, Hefu was the one who originally uh, revealed this card, and I think she's kind of right uh, that this is not quite as powerful as it might look. In, in terms of just considering your other options, like Animal Companion, uh, three mana that just gives you plus two plus two to your hand, that which obviously synergizes with this, but would it be better to just play two of those alone rather than relying on having a Death Rattle minion on the field? Um, this plus Big Bad Wolf might be one of the better options, because that's a 2 mana 1-1, one, one, uh, Death Rattle gain a 3-2, and no one's going to remove that because that actually makes your board stronger, and you can capitalize on that with a turn 2 Big Bad Wolf, turn 3 Terra Scale Stalker. Not too bad. Um, I will probably experiment with it, because I am a fan, a fan of uh, trying to build Death Rattle decks with Hunters. Uh, but if it does see some play, it shouldn't make it into every deck. Probably not one that would really go in the super aggro Queen Carnessa one drop deck, but we'll have to see. It's a, it's a cool card though, and yeah, obviously it's basically Prince Hugh who run with a lower mana cost. Okay, next up, Thunder Lizard. So this is a 3 mana 3-3 three, three battle cry if you played an elemental last turn, adapt. Um, so interesting that it requires you to play elementals, though this itself is a beast, so Man, I don't know, maybe some kind of weird curator deck, though, nah, they're probably not, because you can't really play Elementals, Murlocs, um, Dragons, and Beasts simultaneously. But if you are playing a, uh Elemental-heavy deck, and you just play this, it can be like a 3-mana three 3-6, three it can be a 3-mana three 3-3 three three Divine Shield, it can be a 3-mana three 3-3 three three Poisonous, and uh, if you think of that compared to the other cards that kind of have those same effects, like the... um uh, let's say the four mana three three divine shield and silver moon guardian it, those cards that no one ever plays but sometimes you see in arena then this is going to be stronger and more flexible in almost all cases but it does require you to play that um, elemental deck if we just think of it as something like a three mana six three or three mana three six uh then it's probably good enough to see some play uh but obviously it's not super consistent in exactly what it's going to do but its power should be above that of the average 3-drop. So, good in elemental decks. And uh, also you can capitalize on the fact it's a beast in some cases, I'm sure. Okay, next up, and I believe this is the last card for right now, Light Fused Stegodon. This is a 4-mana 3-4. You battle cry, adapt your silver hand recruits. So, uh, very much a quartermaster style card. So, uh, adapt can, once again, be things like plus 3 attack, plus 3 health, plus 1, plus 1. Uh, give it poisonous, um, give it stealth, or some other effects. So, it's kind of comparable to Quartermaster, where you give all your silver hand recruits plus two plus two, but not as consistent. Uh, that said, it's got a better body, three four versus uh, two five, and that card, Quartermaster, is five mana as well. Um, and, in a way, it's a little bit more versatile. Now, I, I'm not sure if this is going to give every silver hand recruit the same effect, or a new one, a new effect for each minion. I'm assuming different effects for each minion, but um, that is pretty relevant because sometimes you might want one poisonous, not four poisonous. So you can give like one of you guys poisonous, and then you adapt the other ones for stats. That could be cool. Um, I think this is a good card if Silverhand recruits are going to be heavy in the meta, but I don't really think there's too much indication of that right now because just a card True Hearts rotating out. There's no Quartermaster. There's no Muster for battle. Uh, there is the one mana make two silver hand recruits card. That's a new spell for paladins, so maybe that will be good with this. But is that enough to make a silver hand recruit deck enough? I don't know. Uh, I would try it out though, because I'm a really big fan of silver hand recruit quarter master style decks. It's fun. Um, so let me check here, but I think that's it for today, guys. So I've been Dark Skeleton. Thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you guys in my future card reviews as we get closer and closer to that April release date for the set. So, till then, guys.